Hey guys, Gathering the Magic back again, and I just wanted to do a short video on, I had a question um, from one of the subscribers saying, well, what's your strategy for playing in bronze? I mean, how do you get started with a, an account in bronze? You know, I only have $10 to spend. Now they're doing the changes with DEC, where you can't get DEC in chess anymore. So can you make a video just explaining um, your strategy? Um, so this account, my uh, Gedfer is the name on the account. Um, I bought my $10 spell book uh, June 10th, so a little over two and a half months ago. Um, they give you 3,000 credits when you purchase your account. So what I would do every day is I would start renting cards. I would go to the marketplace, and I decided on just renting for uh, one or two splinters. I think the splinter I started with was water. So what I would do is I would come to the marketplace and I would look for uh, gold cards. Uh, the reason for that is gold cards give you a 10% bonus. Uh, the next thing I looked at was casting cost. Because in bronze, you're going to have a lot of low mana bat matches. You're going to have a lot of matches probably under 20 mana. So I wanted to find a lot of cards, you know, in the 3 and 4 and 2 mana cost range. So one of the first cards I looked at was the Cruel Cethropod, which is a great tank. It's great for Little League. Um, for its mana cost of three, it gives you, you know, decent attack, armor, and defense. So that was one of the first cards I rented. And I can't remember the price then, but you could see even now, just the rental cost is like 0.5 DEC a day. But if you look at for credits... It's 0 0.70 credits for two days. So that's basically 0.35 credits a day. So that's what I did. I, I would go and I would rent the Cruel Cethropod. I would rent a gold Pelicor Bandit. Um, I would rent a gold Deep Lurker. The Swimmer for the two damage and only four. Um, some other cards that I looked at. This card right here, I think is a great card. If you're getting started in Bronze, a Pirate Captain with the Sneak. And two damage, only three mana, very cheap to rent. Uh, the Crustacean King, a healer for three mana, another good card, and it's gold and it's beta, so it's going to give you the 10% gold bonus and it's going to give you a 5% beta bonus on top of that. So that's basically what I did, and I would make my team, I would focus on two splinters, and I want to show you. The cards that I own now. So the first thing that I did, that was I think the very first card I bought for gold was a Cruel Cethropod. I got lucky in um, a rewards chest, like in my first two or three days, and got a Murd Hamper. And um, maybe a month ago I got the Ever Hungry Skull. And then these other three cards are also cards that I bought off the market. So these are the gold cards that I have. And my original goal was I wanted to not buy any cards unless it was gold. I would just save up my DEC and when I would get 30, 40, 50 cents, I think I paid like 60 or 70 cents for the Cruel Cethropod. I was just going to get all gold cards. Well, I kind of realized a little bit into uh, playing the account that the amount of DEC that it took to get one of these gold cards... I was going to run out of credits way before I could get one of each gold. So then I decided, okay, well, I at least want to get um, one of each Chaos Legion common to start. And if I can, one of each rare. But I think what I should have done instead is just concentrate. As you can see, I've got a lot of the Death Splinter. So what I decided was the first thing I want to do is I want to get the neutrals for commons because they can be used in any deck. So if you're going to purchase any cards, go for the neutrals first, and then pick one or two splinters. So I chose um, the death splinter, so I got one of each of the commons, and I just need one more rare, and I'll have all the rares. And then for blue, I picked up you know, some of the commons. I still need to get the squid. Um, just a couple days ago, I got the demon shark. So those are cards that I own. So one way that I, I managed to pick up those cards, besides just the DEC that I earned, was I would take my reward cards 
and I would level up the commons to level three, and then I would sell them on the marketplace. Because three is the most that you can get for bronze. So originally I was going to just level them all up to three, keep them, play with them, and I was good to go. But then I realized, you know, some of the cards, like the Venari Heatsmith, I never use. I'm never going to play. I think I leveled um, one up to level four and sold it for 25 to 30 cents. So that was 25 to 30 cents that I put towards um, buying other cards. I managed to pull a gold Vampiric Blossom. And I think I sold it like a week or two ago for $1.79, and I used that money to buy my Thaddeus Brood. So if there's a gold card that you pull as a reward card and you're not going to use it, and I was lucky enough to get a rare, you may be able to sell it to get a summoner. Because that's like the main weakness right now of my deck, is I only have the one summoner that I don't have to rent, but... He's level 1, which means I can only play level 1 cards for the Death Splinter. So if I do have like a Silent Chevy, I can still play that, but it's not going to count as a level 3 card, it'll count as level 1. So right now I'm not too concerned about leveling my cards to 3. Um, the reward cards, if I, like I said, if I do get them to level 3, I'm just going to sell them on the marketplace, use that money to buy other Chaos Legion cards, that I can't get in rewards chests and kind of grow my account from there. So that's a little bit of my strategy. Um, I try to keep my rentals under 30 credits a day. I mean, you'd be amazed how many cards you can get off the marketplace for fractions of a credit. Or maybe you rent a card for a week for like two or three credits. So if you can make your credits last a long time doing it that way. Um, another thing that I wanted to show you today is this is a market update for the last week. Um, how many packs sold and the prices, how the prices have changed. So as you can see for alpha and beta, just being old, slow weeks. Um, I think the week before you could see 19 packs of alpha had sold this last week, only three sold. But look at the price jump. Last week they sold for about $137. This Week 159, beta 11 packs sold. Um, I was one of the people that bought one. I managed to get it for about $31. Someone sold it really cheap, and the price is back up to $48. They were selling for around $58. Uh, the last one sold like a day or so ago for $48. Still incredibly undervalued. I don't understand why beta is not at least $75, $80, $100 a pack. Um, it will be probably in three to six months. Alpha. There's just, look, 6,000, that's it. Alpha, some of the most expensive cards. Let's take a look at Alpha, just to show you why I'm so excited about Alpha cards. Go to the market, go to Alpha, just click on regular. Let's not even look at the gold. $1.25 for an Alpha card, and there's less than 10,000 in circulation, really. I mean, look at how ridiculously low some of these numbers are. And then, of course, for the golds, your cheapest alpha gold is over $100. And people go, oh my god, that's expensive. There's only 400 That's it. 400 gold. I mean, I know this is probably a junk card, but still, it has its uses. It's good in Little League, but it's an alpha. It's a gold. There's less than 500 I mean, people may think I'm crazy. This will be a $1,000 card someday. And then you look at the... Epics and Legendaries. One thing I think you'll notice is for sale, you don't even, there's three, let's look at the Legendaries. There's three listed. One of these, one of these, and two of these. Look at how many are in existence. 27, 25, 25. And just to show you, there are nine Legendaries for Alpha. On the entire marketplace, there's not even, six of them aren't even on here. That's how rare they are. So why in the world are Alpha Packs only 159 when there's cards? I mean, yeah, these prices are ridiculous. People are just throwing them out there just to see what they'll get. But even looking at the non-golds, you know, you're looking at $110 for the cheapest legendary up to $750. I, I don't understand why packs are not. But 
take it what it's worth. Um, like I said, these will be four figures in a couple of years. I mean, you're going to see alpha packs, a thousand, then twelve, then fifteen hundred. So for for me, if I can, I'm just saving up my funds. I was lucky this week. I got a beta pack at a good deal. Um, I might pick up another beta pack and then a couple untamed. Because untamed, as you can see, they're selling at about eight hundred a week. So at this clip. They're going to sell out in 70 weeks, so, you know, a little over a year at that rate. So, year and a half, two years, untamed packs will probably be as rare as alpha packs. You're only going to have a few thousand left, and, of course, that price is going to go up. Um, Dyson Orb, you know, slow weeks again, but steady. They sold 10 the previous week. They sold 10 this week, so they're just slowly ticking down. Um, probably because there's not, you know, super exciting cards that people really, really want. But just the fact that they have such a low print run, they have, you know, such a low quantity left, the price is reasonable. These I don't think are going to skyrocket anytime soon, but I think these are packs that long term are going to steadily increase over time. Uh, Chaos Legion really slowed down this week. Uh, the previous week sold about 100,000 packs. This week, as of this recording, Saturday morning, um, I try to do this about the same time because I know Chaos Legion, this number is constantly changing. But you can see less than 60,000 packs sold from this time this week from this time last week. So Chaos has slowed down a little bit. Um, we're getting close to the next airdrop. So, you know, at this rate, within the next month, we're going to get the airdrop. Um, I expect this will probably pick up maybe to 75, 80,000 this week. So probably two to three, three weeks, we'll have that next uh, summoner for Chaos Legion. Okay, guys, there you have it. Um, just wanted to show you a little bit of my strategy and my thoughts on some of the older packs. Um, let's look at, well, real quick before the end of the video, let's look at beta. I'm just kind of curious for beta prices. So for the legendaries for beta, yeah, look, just ridiculously number, low numbers. Okay, guys, just wanted to share those numbers with you and go over a little bit of my strategy for my bronze account. Um, like I said, it's just a slow and steady grind. I know it is more difficult now that um, you can't get DEC for chess, but one thing you may want to consider doing just to get some DEC for rentals is go to your cards, level your reward cards to level three, which is max bronze, um, sell them on the marketplace, and you'll be able to get a little bit of money for rentals. Um, if there's any other questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Um, I will do a market update every Saturday and maybe go through some more strategies as well. Um, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I will have a video coming up shortly with my uh, daily rewards chest. As you see, I've got to get started. i got less than two hours to go. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon. Happy grinding.